Recently, I had the privilege of walking the Kokoda track in Papua New Guinea with my father-in-law, and I'm going to take you on that journey. Day one was easy with a buffet breakfast in the hotel and a flight to Kokoda because we were walking back towards Port Moresby. This is where you get your first taste of the trail. It's a short, flat walk, but extremely hot. It's like, what, about 400 yeah. degrees right now? Yeah, 400. Feels like yeah. 10,000. Pizza cooking up temperature. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were blessed with a great spot to swim for our first night of camp, and lucky because because day two was a bit more eventful. Right, here we are, day two. We're about to climb our biggest hill so far. And uh, Pete, you had quite a night. Yeah, yeah, got some pretty bad diarrhea. Uh, up three. <laughs> Pete, can you just tell us what you're really thinking? <laughs> it was really, really bad. Unfortunately, that bug went through the entire group, but if you were gonna get it, today was the day. This is apparently most famous for its uh, toilet. So, as you can see here, this is the bathroom facilities. And when you sit on the toilet, that's what you see. How good's a poo with a view? The locals are some of the kindest human beings you will ever come across in your life, and the view's absolutely spectacular. If you're wondering how hard is the trek to do, well, I guess I'll let my huffing and puffing tell that story. It's an emotional journey to take as you retrace the steps of the men who fought at Kokoda and appreciate everything they did for us. You also get a real appreciation for your porter as we're all booted up and ready to go and they're slogging away barefoot. They are incredible. Everywhere you look, there is beauty and there's also scary moments too. All right, we're about to stop for morning tea and I'm gonna show you the bridge that I just walked across. Now, I couldn't film while I was walking across it because it was too dangerous and you're gonna, once I show it to you, you're gonna understand. The warning was, this bridge is rotten, be careful, as Dan found out. Oh, some of the timber gave way a little bit. <laughs> Almost went through, but all good. It was like having our own Fuzzy Wuzzy Angels as the boys literally rebuilt it in front of our eyes. Now, my father-in-law is an engineer and his thoughts on its structural integrity? Needs work. <laughs> as we trekked on, there were many, many more bridges to cross. A lot nicer than yesterday. And many mountains to climb. It's the equivalent of going up and over Mount Everest if you do the entire track. We only had one day where things got a bit hairy. This is Brown River. And we're gonna get across this. Uh, we had a pretty big storm last night, so a lot of rain came down and there's no bridge. So, we're going to work out if we could safely walk across it because it's flying pretty hard, or whether we turn back and find another way. We learnt pretty quickly we were absolutely going through it. As we get near, close enough. we let go of the rope. When I said go, you just let go and then so we go to where it is. The undercurrent was so strong, it was near impossible to keep your feet on the ground. And as you'll hear here, I was very lucky to have my porter Henny right behind me. Let go now. After drying off maybe 5% because you are wet the entire week, we came across a piece of history. So we were just walking the track and one of the porters stopped and picked up a bullet. Looks like it's never been shot before, which is just insane to think after all of these years, they're still finding bits and pieces along the Kokoda Trail. The only way I can describe it is life-changing, and I have so many more stories I cannot wait to share with you. The reason we did this walk was to raise money for homelessness in Queensland, and thanks to you and the amazing people at Compare the Market, we tipped over 95 thousand dollars so thank you so much